Hello and welcome back. I am Antonio and this is the art of game design. So in today's lesson, we're going to start at the very beginning, which is you, the author, the game designer. Yes, because um, there is no work that doesn't begin with a creator. And in this case, it is very similar to all forms of art. The author needs to be someone that has an inclination to create, but more than that, has an inclination to speak out something that's relevant to the world, something that they saw that nobody else around them saw, something that they can feel that they can communicate, while at the same time validating their own existence by putting in something of their own, something that's personal to them, something that speaks of their own identity. So in terms of game design, when you start to create, you need to first look at yourself. Yes, because you are your best asset. Everything you know, everything you've learned, all your stories, where you've been, what you desire, all of these things are within you. And all of this is the best source material to create whatever. And that is true also for games. Right. So in case of a, of a writer, when you stand, stand down to write your first word of your book, you need to first realize that there are a lot of words that are within you. A lot has been written in you. And much of that is much more interesting than anything else, you know, and, and because it's real, it's human. It's already something that's a human experience, a human emotion a human story, right? And if you start from there, you're going to be set to a much better start than if you start on something that doesn't really speak to you, that doesn't, you know, mean anything to you. I'm not saying that the, that's not possible. I'm just saying that it's harder. So it's best to start in you. So in terms of games, start with the games that you love simple enough, right? Start with something that speaks, um, uh, that, that gets you excited to play. Something that you want to show to other people. Something that, that, that you would love to play with other people, you know? Be it a video game, be it a board game, doesn't matter. Something that you're excited about, that, that has something in it that is, um, that resonates with you, you know? And, and, and in, in, the, in, the, in the other side of the coin, you can start by eliminating everything that you don't really care for, right? All of those style of games or game mechanics that you care very little for. Just remove them for now, right? Don't, don't bring them out, you know? Don't waste time tackling that if it's not your thing. That doesn't mean that you might not come back to that. But for now, as a start, leave them out, you know, eliminate them from the process of starting, you know, because we're at the very beginning, right? And we want to give ourselves the best start possible. So start with what you love. Start with something that even now doesn't quite exist, you know, something that you yearn to exist, but doesn't quite exist, not in the form that you would want it to exist, right? So a game that has something that you love, but you wish it was a little bit more like something else, but that doesn't exist. So that's a really good start, right? By going after something that you already love, but wish was better and do it better. You know, start like that. Start with picking up, you know, just mimicking something that already exists, but changing it to your liking, to the way that you think it would be better. And that's a really good start, right? Because all art is a transformation. We don't really create from scratch, we tend to steal, right? So good artists are good thieves, you know, we copy from each other constantly. And that's the way that, that, uh, that the whole thing works. And that is okay. So long as you make an effort to hide those, those um, sources or to, you know, give them credit where credit is due while showing that the things that you added to those make it different enough 
to validate its existence, right? It is important to distinguish between something that's just self-focused with something that starts from you but is geared towards somebody else you know and i think the the the, the first one is more therapeutical more amateur ish than the the second one you know the second one is what we call art you know when you create something that starts with you but ends on somebody else you know and this is the the, the way to to create art if you just remain focused on yourself and doing something that only you like then the most um, it's it's just it's just therapy it's not actual art it's something that's just uh not going anywhere right and that's okay if you're looking to do something like that if you're looking to just do something that you really enjoy and just be focused with that that's perfectly fine but keep in mind if you want to reach a broad audience you need to consider that audience right so when you do something that begins with you keep in mind that it will not end with you okay and and normally the great art forms and the great art works are those that tend to leave people wondering where his his uh, the, the the author the, the the game designer left is prints right it's not completely obvious they have to kind of dig through the surface to realize what of that author is his own personal experience, his own personal emotions. So if your story is laid out, just people can't look away from it. That's normally, it could work if your story is strong enough. If, if, it's, if you're writing a book or making a movie about something that you lived and that is a true story that is strong enough and, and it stands on its own then that's okay but normally it's best to hide your your self-expression the best you can in the finished work in the finished product but when we begin we need to look at that we need to start there and again I, i'll start with with the beginning you are your best asset right the experiences you have the things that you are interested in all of those yearnings and the things you wish exist but don't yet exist are the best starting point you know and that's a great source of material you don't you don't need someone like me to teach you to do game design although it is handy to have someone like me telling you that you have everything within you to do your own games and your own work and your own art so yeah and if this is useful then i'm pleased and i and i and my job here is done so I'll see you again in the next lesson. Take care, goodbye. Thanks so much for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel for more free videos like this one. If you are looking for more advanced lessons or wish to show me your own work, check out my Patreon for more information. If you like this video, why not share it with a friend or a colleague that is interested in game design? I'll see you in the next one.